Good morning, modern steaders. This is gonna be the last time that we feed our meat birds. We're gonna be harvesting them tomorrow. Today we gotta to get set up for that big day. We're gonna feed them this morning, and then we won't feed them again. We wanna hold feed for them for at least 12 hours, so that way when we go to harvest them, all of their, their gizzards in their bellies isn't filled with grain that they're not gonna eat. So I'll move them this morning, and then tonight I'll move them again, get them on fresh bedding, so tomorrow morning they'll be nice and clean. These birds are huge. Look at the, oh man, we have one casualty. Bummer. But what I was gonna say is these guys are huge. Some of them are gigantic monsters like that guy right there. And then a couple of them are smaller, they're hens. And also, when we got our meat birds, we lost about half of the batch. So the hatchery resent us some, but it took them a week to get them to us. So we have some that are a week younger, but we're gonna process them all at the same time. That's a bummer about that meat bird. We're so close to harvesting and we lost one the morning before. Uh. You guys are gonna try to fight me, I got you. <laughs> That's the first one we've lost since they've been out on pasture. It's to be expected, but we don't like when it happens, especially when they're this close. Probably died of a heart attack. They grow so fast, their hearts can't keep up. It still amazes me how much forage they eat. Leave in the comments down below, what do you think the weights of these birds are gonna be? It's such a bummer when you lose any chicken, but it's even more of a bummer when you lose one that's harvesting weight the morning before. Man, that was like, probably would've been a four or five pound dressed out chicken once it was all done and in the freezer. It's a little foggy in here this morning. Let's see if the uh, cucumber beetles are back. They're not squash beetles, they're cucumber beetles. Right here. That's what they are, and little buggers. Not seeing too many of them. That's a good sign. Oh, I spoke too soon. There's three right here on this leaf. One, two, three. They seem to like to hide in the new growth right here in the very top. So first thing in the morning, if you can come out in your garden and look, they're not flying yet, so you can find them a little bit easier. We've been coming out here a couple of times a day and going through the plants and getting all the bugs we can find. So we might be catching up on them. Not seeing any on the zucchini or summer plants. Summer plants. Summer squash plants. Oh. Let's get these doors opened. I'll have to come back out in a little while and see if the cucumber beetles are worse than they are right now or if we're getting a handle on them. But so far, I'm liking what we're seeing. I want to go check in on the broody hen and see how she's doing with the baby chick we put in with her last night. The other night, I should say. Should imprint on her. You going? One. And there you go. Look, you snoozed. You coming under? My guess is the broody hen's still in here. I'm gonna take her out with the chick, but I'm gonna wait till the, the grass dries out. It's pretty wet. Do you see the baby chick right here? There's the baby chick. So I'm gonna put a little bit of food right there for him. The baby's under there hiding. Oh, I wish you could see it better on camera, but right there's the baby. <laughs> oh, there it is. You're a good mama. You 
Create that green pretty quick. You should have seen the mama and the baby chick. Oh, I gave him a little bit of grain there eating it and the baby chick was hiding under the mama coming out and pecking at it Good morning Figaro He's got a chipmunk che teasing him that chipmunk better watch out, huh? Feels nice to be able to wear sweatshirts and jackets first thing in the morning again 50s first thing in the morning feels nice us northerners aren't used to waking up to it being like 80 degrees first thing in the morning we like it chilly in the morning and then for it to warm up and afterwards. What, you don't like your grain this morning? She's like, that's not what I wanted. I don't know what else you want. You don't like anything <laughs> else. Oh. What do you think you want in there? Hmm? Your coat's looking nice. Nice and shiny. The automatic chicken coop door on the chick shop. Yeah, opens up at like 520. And then I just watched those fly out. So, one of these nights, I'm gonna have to come down here and clip all these chickens' wings. Cause we don't need these chickens flying out. Come on, go under. Come here. Over this way, we got one in. It was about 10 minutes after the automatic door was out there, all running around eating, and they started flying out. So I'll have to start clipping their wings. That's the one thing about these smaller breeds is they're a little bit more flighty. And they can get out and fly out pretty easy. You boys want out on pasture? Your boys have started to do a good number over here. All of this out here was tall like that grass back there. Doing good. I'm thinking this grass is going to last them about a week. So them being out on pasture is going to save us quite a bit in hay cost this summer. And then we don't got to hire anybody to brush hog. So it's going to save us money all the way around. I thought I was going to catch you girls snoozing. You're just like standing and waiting on the bunk beds, don't you? Look, you're out early enough, you can go have a second breakfast. The girls are waiting for you down at the feeder. Want to smell alfalfa? Your babies are looking for you, Buttercup. Long line. Where's your mom? Okay, I'm gonna go straighten this. Are you coming out? Where were you? Huh? Where were you? Good morning, Patty and Cake. You guys ready for breakfast? Huh? I know you are. Ready? I'll get it over there in the wet grass. You boys enjoying it? You're looking pretty lost over there. So once we harvest the meat birds out on pasture, these little guys right here are our next batch. And they'll be ready to go out in those chicken tractors as soon as the other ones are not occupying them. We've been getting a lot of questions lately about our chicken harvesting setup. So I thought today we'd bring you along and I'll give you a little bit of an in-depth detail of what we have and how we set it up and why. We like setting up all of our equipment right over here, close to our outdoor kitchen. So I want to mow that first so we're not 
standing in tall, wet, soggy grass. All right, now that we got that mode, we're gonna go get our equipment. Is she long enough? Just barely. Oh, that won't go anywhere. Feels so weird setting up over here because we used to have apple trees here, the old chicken coop, apple trees or trees back there coming out to like right here. You're always tripping it and your head hit with branches. So it just feels weird having it all completely open right here. Totally different. Feels nice though. Yeah. Totally different. All this harvesting equipment, we didn't start with all of it, but we'll go over what we have and we'll tell you what your must haves are. This right here is a Scalder, think of it as a miniature hot water heater. It heats the water to whatever temperature you set the electronic digital control at. This one is 110 volt, they make 120 volt. Definitely a must have as a scalder, but we didn't start off with an electric scalder. What we started off with was an outdoor turkey fryer, propane operated. We use that for scalding our birds, and we also, we still have it, and we still use it for hot water bath canning for making our different pickles and stuff. So then we upgraded a few years ago to the electric one. The electric one's nice because you set it to your temperature you want and you don't have to keep checking it. The propane one, you have to keep checking the temperature, make sure the water's not too hot and if it is, you gotta turn on, turn off the propane and add cold water to it if it's too hot and vice versa. So the electric one is definitely nice. It's, it's a convenience. I also like having stuff that's for a certain thing and that's it. <laughs> And a stainless steel. For that kind of hard, for harvesting stuff. Right. Yeah. Stainless steel, it stays nice, easy to clean. But you don't have to start off with this one. No. We used our other one for probably over a span of 10 years. We didn't get this until a couple of years ago. Right. This is our automatic chicken plucker. But we never used to have, well, I guess we always had an automatic chicken plucker, but these used to be the automatic chicken pluckers. We oh, I did most of the plucking. We first started off with, I built like a swing frame, and we would have the chickens upside down by their feet once they were already dispatched, and then we would pluck them by hand. We'd scald them, and then we'd have them hanging upside down, and we'd pluck them by hand, and that process took forever. Forever, and you can never get every single feather. They were never pretty looking. We still had like the little tiny pin feathers. But we did that for 10 years. So then after that, we decided and invested in a chicken plucker. They're a few hundred bucks, they're expensive, but it is a huge time saver. It makes the job that much more enjoyable is not the word. What's the word? I don't know, I dreaded it before this. Right, so. if you, you hand pluck, you know what I'm talking about, and it's dreadful, but when you get the automatic chicken plucker, it just makes it go that much more smoother and quicker. 
I mean, if you just have a few chickens, it's not a big deal, but if you have probably more than yeah. 10 or if you have If you do have more than 10 chickens, an automatic chicken plucker is definitely worth it. There's a lot of areas that you can rent them. In our area, you can't. So we got this one from Coops and More. We've had this for three or four years now, and it works awesome. Time saver, not only is it quicker, but the birds come out looking beautiful. We'll show you tomorrow when we're harvesting tomorrow, but they come out so clean. They're spotless. There's no feathers left on them. And if they are, they're just like the little big ones. You can pull them out, but I mean, it's amazing how much of a difference doing with an automatic plucker work looks and works. It's almost like there's like a wash machine and they almost come out looking like they just were washed. The big thing with the pluckers, you want to make sure it's stable. So we just want to make sure it's not going to roll on us. So the inside is loaded with these little rubber fingers. This pot right here is stationary and this bottom area spins and then you put your bird in there after you've dispatched it and it's been bled out and then it goes around, spins around in a circle, hits all these little fingers and this pulls off all the feathers. The feathers fall down into this little crack right here and while you're using it you run water and then the feathers come out here. And then we put a cement tub down here with holes in it so the water can drain out and then you have all your feathers collected in one nice little spot. And then these are our harvesting cones. This is another must have. You don't have to have this elaborate setup but you need some kind of cone, whether it's a traffic cone that you put your chickens in because the nice thing is when the chickens go in upside down they kind of get snuggled in the cone and they're upside down so they relax, they slit their necks, they bleed out, it's peaceful. Some people will chop their head off or hang upside down by their feet and do the same thing. If you do that, the chick needs to run around and makes a mess or they hang them by their feet, they flap around and make a mess. It's a lot more humane. This year we're also going to be trying some new cones. These ones we got and they're completely round. This is the turkey size, we're not going to need that but we're going to need some smaller ones and then a couple of larger ones because the chickens range in all different sizes. That one looks like a megaphone. Like a cheerleading megaphone? Do, do, do. <laughs> Mark's like one too. Just use it now, not after. Right. The first cones I had, I made out of sheet metal and just cut them into a triangle and rolled them up and riveted them together. So there's so many different things you can use. These ones are nice because they're galvanized. So you can wash them, leave them outside. You don't gotta worry about them rusting on you. I like you can stack them in each other. Yes. I like to have a few different containers to capture the blood in. These right here are small cement trays. And then you can use just a bucket. And then what I like to do is I like to put wood chips in the bottom, wood shavings or water. So that way when the blood goes down in there, it doesn't just dry and harden onto the plastic. You can take it out, dump it into your compost pile. And it's a lot neater and cleaner that way. And this is an old cement tray. It's busted, but it works perfect for collecting the feathers. Put it right here, the feathers come out with the water, and then it has a spot for the water to drain out. Another must have is a 10 gauge extension cord if you're going any distance. We learned this the hard way. If you have a small extension cord, meaning the gauge of the wire, which is a bigger size, like a 12 or a 14, it'll stall out your chicken plucker. Your chicken plucker needs to have a good supply of electricity. So you wanna have a 10 gauge or bigger extension cord for your plucker and for your scalder. The extension cord has a three-way plug on it. I don't wanna to have to put any more extension cords or adapters off of it. What I do is I get the plucker and the scalder set up near each other so they can both reach the plug. So we 
dispatch the chickens, scald them, and then from the scalder, they go into the plucker. This is our outdoor kitchen, and so we do our harvesting in here. After we have a couple chickens ready, we bring them in here to clean them out, and then the kind of the process starts going, and this is really easy to use, easy cleanup. Then we bring it over here and rinse it all down. And then we go and we have a cooler that we use. Tomorrow, right before we start, we're gonna fill this with ice, cold water, and some apple cider vinegar. And then as we go and we clean, they will sit in the cold water bath until they're ready for the next step. So once we're all done harvesting all the birds, they've been sitting in the cooler for a while. We'll go to the bottom, we'll start taking the first ones out. We take them out, bring them back over the sink, re-rinse them, and then we sit them upside down with a cavity and on the table and we stand them all up here. We let the water drip out of them for a little while. Then we put our shrink wrap bags on them, put shrink wrap bags on them, and then we bring them back out to a clean hot water bath. And then that's gotta be 180 degrees. We dunk them in there and they come out looking like they were store-bought chickens. It's beautiful. Tell them our trick with the wire ties. So we use wire ties to keep our bags shut and we use colored wire ties. So every batch, every year we use a different color. So when you go down to the freezer and you have a bunch of birds, you say, oh, right now we're working on the red ones. That was last year, so that was the first batch. And then the next one's a green, a purple, whatever color. So another thing we do is we use zip ties. And instead of poking a hole into the bag to let the air out, we put a straw in the center of the bag with the zip tie around it, put it in, all the air comes out of the bag and when we pull the bag out, we pull the straw out at the same time, zip tie it up, and then you don't have to worry about putting a label or a piece of tape over the hole you pricked in your bag to let the air out. So we won't be showing any of that today, but if you guys want to see that in tomorrow's video, we're going to be harvesting all of the meat birds. We can't show the gory stuff. YouTube does not allow that. So we're going to show it as much as we can in the best detail we can tomorrow. Most of the products we use while we're harvesting our chickens are from coopsandmore.com. I'll have a link in the video description down below with a 10% off promo code. One of the other things we also use, and it's very convenient, are these transport cages. These ones are from Coops and More also, but I'm going to bring you down below and I'll show you what I used to use. I made one out of wood and it was pretty big to hold all of the chickens, so I find it convenient now to use the plastic ones and you can keep about 15 in each transport cage. So this right here is a wooden crate that I made. And this will hold 40 meat birds when you get ready to harvest them. And I had to put it in the front of the Kubota tractor and it worked great, but it's pretty heavy. Once we got the goats, we put it in here because I like to climb on stuff. And that's where it sat since. So now we use the ones from Coops and More, but you can build your own. They're fairly simple to make too. You just want to make sure you don't make them too big so you can't move them by hand. Afternoon ladies. How many eggs do you think today? Mm, ten. Ten? I think tomorrow we'll get more because it's pretty cool today. Now we gotta check on the broody hen. Oh, she's out. Here's her baby. Did the baby fly down? Alright, so we just had two broken eggs. So that'd be two, four, We got 11. You are noisy, honey. Oh, moly. There you are. Hang out with your mama. Well, that's not going to work. We have to keep the little chick with the meat birds till it gets bigger. Mama was not protecting the chick from the other chickens. The other big chickens were pecking at it pretty good when I was out there. So I grabbed it up as quick as I could. She's gonna stay with the meat birds, even if she has to go out on pasture with them for a while until she gets big. Then we'll put her in with Olivia's new egg laying flock once she's big enough. Don't mind my shirt, there's a couple spots of water. I got out of control, scrub my potatoes. We have leftover ham from the other night's supper. I have some sweet potatoes and some regular potato and some onion. So I'm gonna just take that and we put I have a Dutch oven that's heating up on the grill. So I'm gonna put all this stuff in there, let it cook for a little bit, and then I'm gonna add the ham, probably halfway through, and cook that all up. 
and then uh, a vegetable, another vegetable on the side. So just real simple. I don't know about you, but I love one pot meals like this. One of the great things about it is any of the leftovers, the potatoes and ham is gonna go great with some fried eggs for breakfast. I'm gonna get like three or four meals out of this ham steak that we had the other day. Man, delicious. Pretty soon, the sweet potatoes and the potatoes will be coming and the onions will be from the homestead. It feels good to be set up and ready to harvest the meat birds tomorrow. It's one of those things we look forward to having the meat in the freezer, but we don't look forward to taking the life of the animal. But we respect the animal and we are thankful for what they're gonna provide for us. We look forward to that pot. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us, guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead. Tomorrow we will be harvesting the meat bird, so if you don't wanna watch that, I'm just giving you a heads up now. Because I get it, it's not the easiest thing to do or to watch. So thanks for coming along and thanks for understanding and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumina Acres.